What's up, Veggie Outers? It's Elijah Lau, founder of the Veggie Outers, and we're at Nuno's Taco Veg Mix Group. And Veg Mix Group, yep. Yeah. And I have the founder of Nuno's right in front of me, Nuno himself. So, I want to thank you for giving us this uh, mini interview so yeah, we can find sure, out man. more about uh, the restaurant of Nuno's and how it got started. Yeah. So, based on that, how did the restaurant Nuno's get started? So we started, my wife and I, we started at the farmer's market. That was farmer's market. Okay. Um, we're coming up on our five years here. Uh, and at the farmer's market, we were there for about six months. I'm trying to remember what year it was, man. You know, with COVID and all that, you know, it's it just a like blur. Yeah. yeah, so I, I'm thinking it was 2019. That's when I'm, I think it was late. 2018 December that's when we started at the farmers market and we were there till maybe May of uh, 2019 so gotcha. yeah. okay and when did you get this uh, the physical location we started uh, that was around July I can't remember the exact date I'm horrible I'm horrible with anniversaries and stuff like that <laughs> man so <laughs> I should have done my homework before getting you uh, before starting the interview, but yeah, it was uh, it was July. I know I've got it on my, one of my notes or something here from like previous years that I've had to look into it. But yeah, uh, so around July, that's when we opened the physical brick and mortar. Okay, um, and uh, you're vegan personally, right? Yeah, I'm vegan. What inspired you to go plant based or vegan? Uh, it was actually my pops. I think a lot of people know my my parents. Uh, they're the owners of El Palote, Palote Paneria. Uh, so my dad actually was the inspiration. He was vegan for a good solid maybe two years until I decided to to join him. <laughs> and uh, my wife took maybe about another year until she went, you know, full vegan as well. Uh, and my kids, we've got three kids. They're vegan. They're be they're vegan from birth. So um, and our dog as well. We have a German Shepherd. We've had him since he was a month old, and he's been vegan as well. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a it's a family thing. So all of us. Yeah. Interesting. Um, was it any different raising the vegan dog? I'm kind of curious. Uh, no, I wouldn't say it's different. It's just you buy the dog food, the kibble, and that's okay. it. You know, you just get them. There's several brands out there uh, to to use. We use uh, personally V Dog. I think that's one of the better known ones. Um, but no, no. Uh, he's about 75, 76 pounds, so he's a full grown German Shepherd. Uh, haven't had any issues, and we he's about six years, human years old, so it's a good dog. Okay. No issues, yeah. Cool. So, um, what would you say inspired you to start doing that? Uh, so, def Definitely from my family's background, they had owned restaurants, non-vegan restaurants before. We come from a line of bakers in Mexico as well. On my mom's side, that's the family trait. Okay. So I always grew up around either the kitchen, restaurant setting, baking. All that was part of my childhood. So okay. I told myself whenever I was maybe in my late teens, I told myself I will never own a restaurant ever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it. I went, I went, I went in, yeah, I went into finances for a better part of 10 years oh. and then, um, and then told my wife, you know what, I want to open up a restaurant. So, and here we are, <laughs> you know, five years later, here's Nuno. So, okay. Uh, so what part as you got older finally took you over as far as wanting to start a restaurant? I think the fact that when I started out as vegan, there wasn't as many options out there. So it required a lot of creativity. It required a lot of, uh, a lot of made from scratch. Uh, now I think we're blessed that there are a lot of options. I mean, you can go anywhere and you'll find options. So, um, but back then, uh, 13 years ago, Sounds like a long time ago, but it really isn't. I mean, there wasn't that many options. You know? We were lucky to have vegan cheeses, yeah, you know. But you know, the quality's obviously gone up. But from that, from the protein options in the frozen food section, you know, you were really stuck with just the the basic staples like legumes and fruits and veggies. Right. That's what you were stuck with, and juices and stuff. But now, I mean, there's just a wide array of different options. 
right. that you can choose from. Yeah. I always tell people that the vegans that nowadays they're spoiled. Yeah. So I've been vegan for 12 years. Good. So I remember the Metroplex when like there are limited options. Yeah. I think as far as vegan restaurants go, there's like maybe Loving Hut and Spirals and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Then yeah. they started spawning later. Yeah. So it actually is pretty amazing what's happening yeah. on Metroplex as far as expansion of plant based options. Yeah. In restaurants and also in the store with the yeah. Beyond Meats, the Impossible, with the just alternative meats in general. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a, a lot of options. Uh, talking about the OG restaurants, one of my first experiences, actually, my first vegan experience was at The Vegan. I'm sure you know The Vegan here in, yeah, you know, Richardson. in Richardson. So yeah. that was the first vegan restaurant that I had ever gone to. We still go to there, they're good people. Um, yeah, the, the, the options were very limited to maybe three with the vegan, Spiral, and uh, Loving Hut. Yeah. yeah. And those options were, like, those are literally three different cities. Like, yeah. One is Arlington, one is Richardson, yeah. and uh, one well, was in Dallas and yeah. Fort Worth. I think there used to be one as well up here off of Arapaho as well. An Asian, I don't know if you remember them, Suma or uh, uh, I recall was it Suma? Was it in Madison? No, over here off of 75 in Arapaho. It was oh. Asian. It was an Asian buffet uh, for lunch and in the, in the evenings they had an, o an, o an open menu. Oh, I don't think I had heard of that. Yeah, that was a really good spot. I, I forget the name though. They ended up the owners retired, oh. but it was a really good spot as well. Um, so yeah, they were limited, you know limited right. but i think they started off as vegetarian or vegetarian options in vegetarian and then towards the latter part of their their tenure there they went to an all vegan menu but gotcha yeah. okay speaking of menu i gotta ask you like what's your most popular menu that's on uh, the Nuno's menu right now like what are or what's your most popular item like what can people not get enough of so we've got a very large selection of you know entrees or whatnot but it really depends as I would say not so much seasonal but I really don't know how to explain it but right now the burgers man we sell a lot of burgers so I want to say there's a lot of outside influences whether if it's beyond doing a lot of promotions and or impossible or if there's a vegan burger joint opening up in, in Dallas it's kind of in the back of people's mind. So right now, okay. burgers are keen right now. We're a taco joint, but we sell more burgers than tacos. <laughs> yeah, there's there's times during the day where our entire screen is nothing but just burgers. Yeah. And it's like, man, you know, maybe we need to change the name of Nuno's. To Nuno's burger, burgers, Nuno's, burgers Nuno's, Nuno's, tacos. Nuno's tacos, yeah. So, um, but then there are times where we sell a lot of tacos. So, I, you know, it's really, it, there's a lot of outside influences that, that yeah. determine that. Um, but over the stretch of the five years that we're coming up on, uh, yes, tacos or taco plate, uh, whether it's the four or the five count, but it's what's in the tacos, what's the most popular proteins, right. and it would be the Alpa store. I think we sell uh, pound wise of Alpa store is above 80 pounds a week of Alpa store that we sell, whether people are buying it by the pound or in an entree or tacos or burritos, you know? Okay, yeah. gotcha. And uh, just to clarify for the audience, uh, people are buying like the protein source so they could actually use it in their own dishes at home, right? Yeah, so we've got uh, several loyal customers that do food prepping and they come in, they buy you know, a couple pounds for either the week or some people that go traveling or you know, there's holidays coming up. Right. Um, you know, they've got family that they're visiting from, you know, they're going out of state, they take, you know, the proteins, you know. Okay. Um, so that's one of the unique things that Nuno's offers. Because yeah. a lot of restaurants, they would just offer like the protein by the pound that yeah. people can buy and use in their own dishes. Yep. Um, so I think it's been about a year now since we started offering the protein by the pound. Um, okay. When we first started off, Obviously, it's it's a growth thing. You know, as yeah. we're growing, we're we're organ our kitchen's becoming more organized. We're finding better ways to make things. So, initially, we did have a lot of people ask. There was a demand. You know, let's get pro. Can we get protein? Protein is like I can't do that because if I sell you the protein, I won't have any any for my dishes. So, right. 
uh, I, I had to choose whether do I become a, a, a protein, vegan protein manufacturer or a restaurant. And it's like, you know, I got to choose one or the other. But uh, now we've become so efficient. You know, we run a very efficient kitchen, very well organized, fine tuned kitchen that we're able to provide those proteins. Um, there are times during the year where there's a shortage of certain ingredients that we use and we have to limit those. But for the most part, uh, I think we're doing really good and as time goes by it's going to be one of our, our main uh, sales points for our customers you know that they know yeah. they can get vegan proteins here and we're soon right now all our proteins are hot so you buy them you buy them hot uh, we're soon going to start offering those cold so you can buy those frozen so you can buy packs of one or two pounds already frozen for you so nice. you just set them aside and whenever you need them you throw them in some hot water because it comes in a pouch and then you can throw them on the griddle uh, or, you know, saute it, add stuff to it, however, whatever, you know, float your boat on that end. Nice. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> so, with that being the case as far as the whole menu, what do you personally feel is the most underrated dish on your menu? Like, you feel like more people should give this a chance because it's awesome. Um, I would say right now, would be the chopped cheese. I think, it, you know, chopped cheese is really not a Texas thing. So it's really those people that I've either traveled or they're coming from other parts of the country and now they reside here in Texas. The chopped cheese, I think is a very good menu item that not a lot of people, uh, you know, it interests a lot of people, but that's that's a good option. Okay. Especially if you like spicy, because there is a grilled uh, jalapeno that goes in there, so. Okay. Yeah. So um, that's something that you can add to a lot of uh, the uh, entrees on your menu too? Yeah, the grilled jalapeno, the chile toreado. Okay. We don't sell a lot of them. Uh, I want to say that our our sal salsas themselves are telling of what our customers are. We used to make our salsa spicy uh -huh. and per demand we've actually brought down the spice level. <laughs> Every once in a while we'll get a batch of very spicy jalapenos and it's like, damn, I'm sorry. I can't. I have no control over these jalapenos, man. So it comes out extra spicy too. What me is mild, but some people's like, I can't eat this, it's too spicy. It's like, oh, okay, well, you know, I've got no control over that, you know, but, gotcha. but we have toned it down to our customer liking. Um, and yeah, so I would say the, uh, the chopped cheese, but you can always get the chile toriado on as a side option on any, any one of our entrees. So you can order it separately. Okay. Yeah. I'll admit, I'm one of those wimps that can't do spice. <laughs> Not a spice person. Yeah, it's something that you know you gotta you gotta start from. You gotta scale it up. You know, as time goes by, if you just you know eat a lot of spicy food all at once, you're not gonna enjoy it. You know, right? You gotta build up that spice tolerance. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I guess we can go ahead and start uh, wrapping up the interview. But um, um, just so the audience knows, uh, what's the process they should go through to order with you? Because I know um. Your, uh, pickup so a little backstory on that uh, so we used to be I don't know if you ever visited us when we first opened we did. so we used to have booths that ran down um, through one of the sides of the uh, suite here our location and we actually had three booths on this side so we were a sit-down restaurant and once COVID hit we had to completely change our strategy where takeout ordering and all of our ordering was actually in person. So you did, you ordered at, at the counter, obviously with COVID, we had to adjust and adjust fast. Um, we brought in our online platform, so our entire menu online. And in addition to that, you know, you order, you can schedule online, but to answer your question, it's all 100% online ordering. So we no, we no longer have a cashier or a server um, we're 99% takeout we're 50% about of that approximately is third-party uh, uh, delivery platforms Uber Eats, DoorDash or Grubhub so okay. you can order it through them but um, yeah all our orderings online you'll be able to view our full menu it's another question we get asked you know can I take can I get a menu a, a to-go menu or something Everything's completely online, completely digital, kind of like uh, like Amazon. You can't go into an Amazon store right. and order in person. Everything is from your cell phone. Um, we do take orders in person if somebody's paying cash. So we do understand there's cash paying customers. 
Um, so we, we will take your order paying cash with exact or approximate change because we don't carry a lot of change. Cash transactions constitute less than 1%, if that, you know, a tenth of a percent maybe. It's just a couple customers a month. But uh, again, it's just we're completely online, online based restaurant. Um, okay. And uh, I know uh, it's a confusing topic regarding our tables. This is a 900 square foot restaurant, so it's it's small. We're smaller than some people's apartments. Um, 900 square feet. We've been able to keep two tables at the restaurant. So we used to have we used to be able to fit up to 20 people, 20 25 people inside our small space. Uh, but since COVID, we've added a lot of refrigeration, shake machine, margarita machine. Uh, so with that being said, there's two tables, and the two tables we like to offer them by reservation and the reason why is because two three times during the week our entire aisle gets filled with uh, supplies yeah. and we don't have an exact time when they arrive they give us about a three to five hour window at times so around that time if we have customers dining in and we get our supplies it, it can become an issue of you know is there enough space to walk through Does some right. if what happens if somebody falls trips yeah, if something's safety, yeah. yeah, it's all safety. You know, we're trying to make sure that we're thinking about the customer. But some people are lucky. They come up to the door and we've got our tables are free and we've got no orders coming in, supplies coming in that day. And we offer it to them. But uh, worst case scenario, which is really not a worst case, but I know North Texas people don't like eating outside. <laughs> it's not like Austin, you know, it could be a hundred and some degrees and people are enjoying enjoying the outside uh, venues. But uh, anyways, we do have two tables outside and they are uh, east facing. So you've got, you know, a good 80% of the day, you've got no no uh, no sun, you, you're, you're shaded in a shaded area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if someone did want to do the reservation, they go on toast table, right? Uh, or? Um, we used to have open table. But uh, we've, uh, since then, it's been about a year now, it's all via DM. So okay. either DM or Facebook message. Uh, we recommend doing it a day before. Okay. Same days, it kind of can get kind of tough, especially on the weekends. All right, Veggie Outers. Well, that's been our interview with Nuno. Uh, I can firstly say my favorite thing is their punch wraps. I highly recommend them. They're very, very, very tasty. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for our next review, and we'll catch y'all later. Peace out.